Ready? Yeah. Yes. Wow. <laughs> Welcome everyone to uh, one of ACT Research's Ride Along programs. Um, and what we've got here today is uh, Josh from Hylion and Hylion's Hypertruck ERX. And what we want to do is share with you some of the nuances and advantages and uniqueness of a hybrid natural gas uh, truck and how that reads into our decarbonization work that ACT Research has been doing for really since 2018 and even some before then, um, because this is something that we're very keen and focused on and our specialized study is looking at the advantages and the impact that decarbonization is gonna have on commercial vehicles. So with that, I should introduce myself. I'm Ann Rundle, I'm from ACT Research. Um, I head up, I'm Vice President of Electrification and Autonomy. Lydia? And I'm Lydia Beath. I'm a research analyst at ACT, uh, working with Anne on our electrification and autonomy work. And Josh? Sure. My name's Josh Robbins. I'm the VP of Fleet Sales here at Hylion. Cool. So we'd like to just have kind of a conversation about what is, what is, what is the Hypertruck ERX and how does that fit into a decarbonization type of a strategy that if I was a fleet buyer, like, what is it and why would I want this, right? Sure, understand. So the Hypertruck ERX is 100% electric propulsion. The difference between this vehicle and your standard BEV is one, you don't have to plug in uh, to capture the energy, and two, uh, we eliminate the range anxiety. So current BEVs are limited on how far they can go. Our take on it is, is we actually create the electricity on board the Hypertruck ERX using renewable natural gas as a fuel source. So we have a natural gas generator, much like if you think about natural gas generators at home, lights go off, natural gas feeds in, lights go back on, same principle. Except we create that electricity and in turn, it helps propel the tractor and it's also stored in the battery pack. So this vehicle with the current tank configuration of 175 diesel gallon equivalent uh, tank package can go upwards of a thousand miles, including 75 miles pure battery electric. So if you think about issues with non-attainment zones, noise abatement issues where a depot is abutting a residential zone, we can shut down the generator in the tractor and it will run pure battery electric. So literally the only thing you hear is the, the tires on the road. And so the driver has that option, right, to say, do I want to use this as a hybrid or do I want to use it as a pure electric? Or if I'm in a situation where I want to build up my battery and recharge it, I'm going to run just natural gas because then it's also regenerating back the battery. Correct. Right? And another another nice item with our tractor versus a standard BEV is, you know, a standard BEV kind of operates how we treat our cell phones. We let them go to zero, we charge them all the way up again. Zero, so on and so forth. And by doing that, you're limiting the life of the battery. We keep the steady state of charge in a bandwidth to extend the life of the, the battery. Uh, beyond beyond the life of the tractor. And can this product also though, it, can you plug it in um, if, you, if you've been in a situation where you haven't recharged the battery enough, but you want to then the next day start out somewhere, you can plug it in and top it all the way back up to its full. Correct. So at production, we'll have that capability to plug in the, uh, the tractor. It's not necessary because as long as we have RNG, we're good to go. Uh, so you avoid the the cost of the infrastructure for the charging, which is can be substantial. It can, and, and you can end up somewhere where you can't get to it. So that's one, of, especially for a long haul trucking operation, you want to be able to just keep on going and not searching and saying, oh heck, where is that charging? And, Panic. <laughs> and, and, and it's not on my app, where is the darn thing? Yeah. So now you can just say it's, it's not an issue. Exactly, right. so you know, those standard BEVs, it's really for that in-city delivery. Uh, what this vehicle allows fleets to do is go over the road. Um, so there, there isn't a vehicle in the market today that provides 100% electric propulsion going those kind of distances. The other thing is that so many long haul trucks, a lot of times the fleets operated to where the first shift is a guy doing local delivery, da 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 da. 
which you can do, you're gonna do a lot of stop and start. You're gonna recharge that battery. Battery could be also fully topped up, but then they'd slip seat, right? And now another guy takes in, where if it was a battery electric, it would have to, you would have to have that downtime while it charges it back up, right? Exactly, so you know, the, the cost of those vehicles can be substantial. So the, the life they need to run gets pushed out in comparison to your standard diesel because you're not running the miles to, to offset the cost. Yeah, no, it's 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 a pretty slick thing, it, and I think it's um, it's interesting how you guys have developed that. I think what's also unique is that it's a natural gas. So when uh, the next level of, of regulations come in for low NOx, EPA is looking at 2027, your natural gas engines will not need as extensive after treatment to lower the NOx. So you've got a cost savings there versus if this was instead a diesel hybrid, right? Correct. And to, to take it a step further in comparison to a natural gas ICE, we qualify for advanced clean truck rule. Uh, so we get a 75% of one credit for that. And then for advanced clean fleet as drafted, we get a full credit. And then with the recent passing of the Inflation Reduction Act, we, uh, we get a $40,000 tax credit. Yeah, you guys, you totally qualify because the size of your pack hits that bogey. Correct. Absolutely, so it's pretty sweet, um, it, and, um, which, is, which is great because part of the whole thing and part of why the regulations are there is decarbonization, right? So if we want to try to lower our CO2 and lower global warming, the only way we're going to do it is if we start, you know, de you know, taking CO2 out of, of the heavy truck Correct. market. Correct. And, and, you know, today, roughly 60% of all natural gas sold at the pump for transportation is RNG. By 2024, estimates are pushing it close to 100%. When you guys have, are doing your testing and stuff, are you then, so you're running it through a cycle, so you're, you're able to understand what that, what, what kind of emissions you are putting out Correct. under a regular duty cycle. So we'll, we'll be able to provide that kind of information to fleet so we can demonstrate, you know, off of a baseline diesel, the reduction in GHG, PM, NOx, sulfur oxide. Right, so yeah. in turn, they can share that with their customers, the marketplace, whoever they see fit to, to show. So if you think about it, the carbon intensity of an RNG tractor is, can be substantially less than that of a BEV because you really have to look at the, the well to wheel, uh, you know, lifespan of the energy and how it's created and how it's delivered. Absolutely. The, the study that um, ACT Research has done last year and the one we're launching at the, in, in the fourth quarter of this year, we, we've done that same exact wheel to well um, analysis. And if you look at even on average of the grid, yeah, we're at 22% renewables today. It's going to increase, but it's still not 100% renewable. And if this comes from 100% renewable, the other thing, so this, this has that advantage. It also qualifies for low carbon fuel standard uh, credits. So it's, it's kind of, it checks off all the boxes, yep. but it doesn't have that constraint of a full battery electric. Exactly. Right? Right. So we, we eliminate the range anxiety. Yeah. And it checks them all off now as opposed to, okay, well, maybe in a few years we'll be able to take advantage of some of these credits or, um, you know, with the regs. But you're saying, well, right now you can do this and you can go where you want. Correct. You, you know, the industry's goal is to move towards, uh, you know, the BVs with a long range or hydrogen. And it's just, it's not there today. The Hypertruck ERX is here right now. And so speaking of it, it's here right now because you know, for the Advanced Clean Truck Act in California, um, right now always can start generating credits. So by 2024 is when it's required, but today if you're selling, you get those credits. So are you guys starting, is it commercially available yet? Or when, when, or- Great, it, great it's question. it's a bad question. No, no, I, you know. <laughs> great question. So we are starting in about 30 days, providing tractors to fleets to run and their operation and controlled fleet trials. So we're gonna be going through a number of controlled fleet trials, making a couple modifications based on the feedback we get from the drivers and the fleet managers. Um, and then we're looking at production end of 2023, beginning of 2024. So what sort of feedback have you already gotten from those that you've worked with and their reaction to the vehicle? So what you'll see when we get in the tractor and go for a ride is how quiet it is. So the elimination of the noise pollution inside the tractor. If you go in a, in a diesel truck, it's loud. So when we're inside the cab today, 
we can talk at this decibel level, you'll be able to hear. So this is like super, super quiet. Yeah. Yep. So <laughs> yeah, because we're in battery huge, only right now. Yep. So huge, huge benefit. If you think about it, drivers are, are inside the cab that 11 hours a day with that vibration. And it, it, and it wears on you and it leads to fatigue. So, you know, operating in an environment like this is, is much safer for the driver. They're more focused at, at the end of the day. So it's, it's incredibly quiet. On top of that, we've removed the, uh, the transmission. So you don't get, even with a, an AMT or an automatic transmission, you still get that gyration back and forth as the gears are shifting. You won't feel it in this. So that was a shift. I mean, you could feel just a slight bit of the shift, but I, I mean, I could feel it because I'm back, but also I'm like, I was listening for it. Right. And I was looking at where we were, you yep. know, what, what's our MPG, you know, what, what's our what's our speed. So when when is it going to move into that second gear? And you feel but, it too, because we're, we're deadheading right now. So if we were under load, you wouldn't feel wouldn't that. Right. No. So it's a, a slight change. We have two gears in the, uh, in the E axles. At, you know, call it 25 to 30 miles per hour, they'll swap out, but that's and, it. Right, and it's it's different because it's on the axle and not up with the engine, you're not gonna perceive that shifting Correct. when you're in the cab. The other so thing you'll notice too is the power. So at peak uh, horsepower, you're looking at 670. So what that means to drivers is the ability to merge into traffic under load at speed. So that's a, a big safety benefit for uh, for the drivers and, and the passenger vehicles out sharing the road. Yeah, when you think when you consider the torque curve of a natural gas engine and then you add in the electric, it is like adding an e-supercharger in a sense. So it's 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 a great boost and then you just yeah, there's no oh my gosh, can I actually merge? Yeah, can right. I shift? There's can. a big hill coming. <laughs> Uh-oh, put on the hazards. No, no, it's 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 pretty sweet. Um is there a way that when people are, when you're driving, can you sense the difference of if, if it's shifting or if it's changing from running on just the natu natural gas or just the electric? Great question. You can hear the generator kick on. So when the battery falls below a certain set, generator will kick on, but it's, it's minimal decibels inside the cab. So one, one thing I want to draw your attention to is, you know, Billy, when he takes his foot off the accelerator, the tractor will slow down. So really the only time he should be using the, the brake is when he's cut off. When we at ACT Research build our adoption, we look at total cost of ownership and what are the benefits. So something like a benefit of, you know, what we talked about, like low carbon fuel standards, you know, the um, Inflation Reduction Act credits, um, you know, qualifying for advanced clean truck, but also what if there, how do you monetize that value of being able to do something that you either give back to the grid or you give back to, you know, there, there's a value in that. Or, um, or maybe some of the other BEVs in the marketplace, we could help them out, charge them up. Right. Someone <laughs> was thinking about, yeah, what if, what if, they, what if they, they, need, they need a jump? Yeah. Or they need, they yeah. need their batteries replenished. No, it's pretty cool. And, and I think what's interesting is that Hybrids are in, have been in the passenger vehicle side for a while, and it seems that commercial vehicle has sort of been, we're just going to go this way. And you guys said, wait a minute, why not look at the best of both worlds and look at something that is also available today? Correct. What well, makes sense now? Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, it's, it, and, and I think that's what's interesting for us is that it, for ACT research, you know, we understand natural gas engines, so we're profiling that for our total cost of ownership. We understand what the total cost of ownership is for a BEV. So being able to profile and model something like this to understand what those benefits are just sort of feeds right into our expertise, which actually Lydia is the, the driver of the TCO and she's the genius <laughs> behind it. But it, it just sort of matches right into, yeah, we understand this. We understand how to model it. We understand how to look at it from uh, an adoption rate. And that's the things that we will be, be having in our third edition of our decarbonization for commercial vehicles um, study is vehicles like this, right? And so it's, it, it's all a, a kind of a win-win, I think. So we know that, you know, with BEVs and, you know, hydrogen fuel cell, there's this 
big infrastructure problem. Right. And you know, and that's part of the, the range issue is, well, if I can't get to a charge, this isn't going to work. So can you talk to us a little bit about that RNG and the natural gas element? Like what type of infrastructure, you know, is it ready? What needs to happen to really sure. make this so they, <laughs> there, are, there are now over 700 natural gas stations for transportation available to the public today. Uh, and there, there's more coming online. And you know, a big benefit of using natural gas versus another fuel source is we're leveraging the pipeline. So we're reducing the transportation costs that you get with other fuels and also eliminating the carbon associated with transporting the fuel. To, to bring it to the station. So, so big benefits there. And you know, to, to build a station, you just need the pipeline. Right, it's not building out a brand new network like it with hydrogen or, you know, these pa new power stations for EV. Cor You're really... Correct. The natural, tap in. Yeah, the natural <laughs> gas pipeline is incredibly robust yeah. today. What does this mean and, and how does ACT research as being kind of the experts uh, in an analyzing decarbonization and alternative fuels, this, is, this really hits our sweet spot. We've been understanding, looking at natural gas fuel, you know, engines for a long time, and also looking at you know, battery electrics. So it's exactly fits right into where we look at things from a decarbonization. And I think that's one of the other benefits about us is that we're not just looking only at a battery electric solution or only at a fuel cell solution. You know, our analysis of the market looks at what are all the solutions? And so that is something that um, I don't think there's other, anyone else who's like us that is making sure to, to look at all those areas because there's, they meet certain solutions and, and, and we can't just ignore them. Just want to remind everyone that ACT Research is going to be launching our third edition of decarbonization for commercial vehicles, where we'll be looking at the gamut of all sorts of solutions for decarbonization. And we'll be launching that and signing up uh, study participants in the fourth quarter of 2022. And we are targeting to publish that by the end of the second quarter of 2023. So there should be a way for you to click below and follow that link. And that will take you to our prospectus and how you can uh, contact us, either myself, Ann Rundle, or Lydia Vieth, or contact Ian McGriff and find out how you can participate in the study. So we look forward to sharing our information and expertise on things like this to help you make your, make your decisions and where you should invest money.